Not long after Joe Biden enters the Senate in 1973, he makes his first trip to Israel, where he meets with Golda Meir on the eve of the Arab-Israeli war. I go all the way back to Golda Meir. That's going, God, I'm getting old. <laughs> and after that trip, Joe Biden makes defending and promoting Israel a, a central component of his foreign policy vision and positions. Were there not an Israel, the United States of America would have to invent an Israel to protect her interest in the region. He makes clear that his central priority is building up Israel's military might and funneling money and political support to Israel. In 1982, Joe Biden and a number of other senators have a private meeting with Menachem Begin, who was at the time the Israeli prime minister and the Israeli invasion of Lebanon was getting underway. And Joe Biden likes to tell this story, as it was reported in the New York Times, about how Biden confronted Begin over the issue of Israeli settlements. New York Times called my exchange with Menachem Begin the bitterest exchange of a highly emotional confrontation. But what Biden doesn't talk about from that meeting is what Begin says also happened, and that is that Joe Biden got up and gave this impassioned defense of Israel's actions in Lebanon, including the killing of women and children. And Biden said he would do the same thing if he was in Israel's position. Begin, who himself uh, is a war criminal from his actions as head of a militia in the 1940s, said that Joe Biden was too extreme for him Biden has this long track record of defending some of Israel's worst atrocities. In fact, in, in 2001, when the George W. Bush administration issued a very mild criticism of Israel for its so-called targeted assassinations, Biden rebuked George W. Bush, said these aren't assassinations, and actually said that the United States shouldn't be airing its differences with Israel in public in 2006, Joe Biden is front and center as an enthusiastic backer of Israel's simultaneous wars in Lebanon and its massive bombing of Gaza. He says Israel is doing the right thing in both places. In fact, Biden starts to compare Israel's actions in Lebanon to the U.S. invasion and occupation of Afghanistan in the aftermath of 9-11. We went in Afghanistan. Remember we took out a wedding party by accident? Remember we took out with these very sophisticated missiles we had? We accidentally killed some citizens. Have ever a war more justified than us going into Afghanistan? I can't think of any worse since World War II more justified. Yet innocents got killed in us trying to protect America's interest. Joe Biden was an early supporter of recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and also uh, of moving the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, uh, something that Donald Trump ultimately did as president. And the, the way that Biden has sort of carved out a, a critical corner for himself uh, is, is on the issue of settlements. I have opposed settlements for more than three decades. While Joe Biden does have this consistent record of speaking out against the expansion of Israeli settlements, it, it has never been backed up by action. It's akin to a disagreement among very, very good friends. As vice president under Barack Obama, Joe Biden boasted about the closeness of his relationship with Benjamin Netanyahu. The, the people of Israel consider the Biden family part of our family. And in public, Joe Biden once again defended atrocities by Israel when it raided a humanitarian flotilla. That raid killed nine people. And according to the UN, six of them were killed in what appeared to be an extra legal summary execution. You can argue whether Israel should have dropped people onto that ship or not, in the rest, but the truth of the matter is, I think Israel has an absolute right to deal with its security interest. And now Joe Biden is president, and when he entered office, his administration made clear that they did not intend to prioritize the Israel-Palestine situation. But now it's at their front door. You are stealing my house. And if I don't steal it, someone else is going to steal it. No! The recent horrors unfolding in Jerusalem and Gaza were sparked by an ethnic cleansing operation uh, against Palestinians living in East Jerusalem, precisely the type of expansion or annexation that Joe Biden has claimed to oppose. But the Biden administration has overwhelmingly ignored this ethnic cleansing 
and has suggested that it's simply a matter for the Israeli courts. And as has been the case for decades of U.S. policy, the Biden administration has portrayed Hamas firing rockets into Israel as the central, almost exclusive issue, while simultaneously doing everything possible to minimize or excuse Israeli attacks against Palestinians, including attacks that are killing women and children regularly. In a series of State Department briefings this week, the spokesperson, Ned Price, outlined the Biden administration's position, and unfortunately, it's not shocking. Let me start by saying that the United States condemns in the strongest terms the barrage of rocket attacks fired into Israel in recent hours. The journalists at these briefings did an excellent job of exposing the hypocrisy of the administration's positions. Do Palestinians have a right to self-defense? Uh, we believe in the concept of self-defense. We believe it applies uh, to any state. Confronting the attempts at both sides in the killing of, uh, of civilians with impunity. What is this both sides thing? One side is occupying and the other side is being occupied. Could you care to explain what is the both sidism here? Well, uh, most recently, we have called on all sides to de-escalate. And at the same time, this refusal on the part of the Biden administration to recognize that Palestinians have any right to self-defense, something that they repeatedly emphasize Israel has. You said, we believe that it, meaning the right to self-defense, applies to any state. Well, you see the problem, right? Do you regard Palestine as a state? I, I was making a broader point not attached to uh, Israel or the Palestinians in that case. Unless there is some radical shift in U.S. posture and very quickly, the conclusion that we can draw is that Joe Biden believes that the Israeli government can ethnically cleanse Palestinian neighborhoods and that the Palestinians have no meaningful right of self-defense. Biden can no longer claim with any credibility to support a two-state solution and pay lip service to opposing Israeli settlements while simultaneously giving the shield of impunity to Israel's crimes. The question is being called right now.